Welcome to EripediaWorld.com. In today's video, we will talk about some of the diseases which are caused by pollution. These are the diseases which are caused by all the types of pollution like the air pollution, the noise pollution, the soil pollution and even the water pollution. So in this video, we will talk about the dietary problem because all these problems also arises because of pollution. Now we will talk about dietary diseases. So dietary diseases are those diseases which are caused when we eat something wrong or some kind of food which is not good for our health. And among the dietary diseases first we have the gastrointestinal problems. So what are gastrointestinal problems? These are the problems that occurs because of some problem in the digestion. How does the food that we eat get digested or how does the food that we eat uh, that gives us energy and the various nutrients that we require. Right. What happens first when we eat and drink and when we chew this food, the food is initially broken down into very very smaller pieces the enzymes in the saliva that also tries to break down the food into smaller components. So this food then goes down and it reaches the esophagus and then into our stomach. Once it reaches the stomach, the food and the fluid whatever we have consumed are then mixed along with the strong acids and then it is dissolved. The digestive enzymes again continue to break down this food into even smaller components. Now next what happens is this food then goes to the small intestine where it is digested further by the juices from the pancreas and the liver and whatever nutrients come out that then flow towards the blood and then it is supplied to them. However, rest of the food which is undigested comes out in the form of the stool. So that is the entire process that is followed. Now people who have this gastrointestinal problems generally have problems in this entire process. That is the food is not properly digested and even if the digestion takes place the nutrient doesn't reach the blood. Some of the problems or symptoms of gastrointestinal problems are vomiting. So when the food is not digested properly vomiting may take place. Abdominal pain may also occur and diarrhea will also take place. So these are the common signs of gastrointestinal problem. In people who, who are suffering from these problems, generally the food is digested but the nutrients are not supplied to the blood in the right quantity. In fact, the entire food just goes out in the form of the stools. So other signs which include are change in the appetite, flatulence, blood or mucus in the feces, constipation, weight loss, abdominal pain and vomiting or diarrhea. So these are the six common signs if a person is suffering from gastrointestinal problems. Next is uh, nervous system problems. Nervous system problems are slightly severe problems and uh, these also can be caused by some of the dietary habits. Now, the nervous system is actually a very, very complex and highly specialized network. It basically helps us in interacting with people who are around us. The nervous system also controls our sight, our hearing, our taste, our smell, our feelings, or any kind of sensation, I mean. Voluntary or involuntary functions also, such as the movement, the balance, the coordination between eyes and hands. And this system also regulates the actions of most of the parts of our body such as blood flow or the blood pressure. Nervous system actually helps us in carrying out most of our normal works in a day. The symptoms of nervous system problem generally depends on which area of the nervous system is involved and what is causing the problem. So these are the two main things. Nervous system problems may occur very very slowly and it may cause a gradual loss of function. So we may not even come to know. And sometimes these problems may just occur suddenly and it may be life threatening also. So it can be anything because here the nerves are involved. So if a nerve is damaged then the effects can be really severe. Symptoms may be sometimes mild or it may be severe. 
generally this nervous system is actually divided into two one is the brain and then the spinal cord that the spinal cord actually so you see here this is the brain and then the spinal cord the spinal cord actually consists of the cns that is central nervous system and whatever problems arise because of the central nervous system is actually because somewhere that nerve the small nerve is damaged so you see here this nerve here you see a damaged nerve so now this nerve is let's say there is some nerve in the hand which is damaged so then the, your hand will experience some kind of pain right so a small damage in the nerve can also cause a very very severe pain so the other nervous system problems or symptoms may be some blood supply problem vascular which is called the vascular disorder injuries especially injuries to the head and to the spinal cord problems that are present at the time of birth can also be because of nervous system mental health problem such as anxiety some kind of depression disorder that can be because of nervous system exposure to toxins such as carbon monoxide arsenic or lead can also lead to some nervous system problems so a nervous system problems can be from mild to very very severe also let us again take an example so we had seen in the previous picture that there was a nerve uh, damage somewhere in the hand so the source of the pain is this area right if there is a nerve damage at this area immediately because the nerves are connected to the brain and this is connected via the spinal cord so your brain will interpret the message as a pain and including it will talk about its location its intensity and what is the nature whether it is a burning pain or an aching pain or a stinging pain these senses are only because of the nerves through these nerves only the messages is sent to brain and again brain sends back the messages to this area so that is how the central nervous system generally works now next problem is thyroid dysfunctioning now there is a gland in our body that is called a thyroid gland is a very very important gland and this thyroid gland actually influences most of the metabolic processes in our body any thyroid disorder can range from a very very small to harmless problem so thyroid malfunctioning can actually lead to some small problems a problem may be very very small do some harmless problems like goiter so what is goiter goiter is an enlarged thyroid gland near the neck area is called goiter and this kind of problems need no treatment because it is not life threatening but sometimes the problems may be life threatening also for example cancer so it may cause cancer so in a case where the thyroid hormone is produced in very very large quantities it is known as hyperthyroidism if the thyroid is produced in a very very small quantity less than what is required by the body then it is known as hypothyroidism and there are various symptoms like in hypothyroidism a person will experience dry and coarse hair loss of eyebrow hairs whereas in the hypothyroidism again he or she will come across loss of hair and bulging eyes hypothyroidism will have a puffy face and large thyroid that is the goiter whereas in this case also she or he may suffer from enlarged thyroid that is goiter various other problems are arthritis cold intolerance depression dry skin fatigue forgetfulness heavy menstrual period infertility and muscle aches whereas these are the symptoms that she will experience or he will experience in if she or he is suffering from hypothyroidism one important point is that in hypothyroidism a person is generally he tends to gain weight whereas in hypothyroidism he tends to lose weight so these are some of the symptoms of both the types of thyroid dysfunctioning cancers may develop in times due to exposure to low amount of food pollutants over a long period of time because of thyroid dysfunctioning cancerous growth may also take place so you can see here this is the beginning of growth 
then again you can see those green ones so the cancerous growth is taking place and then it is spreading so it also spreads to the underlying tissues because of thyroid dysfunctioning generally it may lead to obesity and these are the various cancers that may develop because of obesity like the esophageal cancer the colon cancer the gastric cancer gallbladder cancer ovarian cancer breast cancer liver cancer so these are the various kinds of cancer that may come up because of gaining weight due to thyroid dysfunctioning so these are various problems so thank you for watching edupedia world videos